Hey guys, today we're going to be creating a tessellation. Now, a tessellation is basically a shape that repeats over and over again and fits back into itself kind of like a puzzle. Tessellations have been around for a really long time. A lot of different cultures use tessellations in their art and architecture. If you've ever heard of this guy, MC Escher, you may have seen some tessellations already. He made a lot of tessellations, but he was most famous for his optical illusion art. Things like this tessellation here and this impossible staircase. We're going to be creating our own MC Escher inspired tessellations today. You're going to need a pencil, some tape, a square piece of cardboard or cardstock. Post-it notes work fine if you don't have anything like that. A pair of scissors and then something to color with. So let's get started. Now it's really important that you use a square piece of paper. I'm using like a little piece of cardstock. You can use the back of a cereal box. And then we're going to draw some random squiggles on two perpendicular sides of our square. Perpendicular means that they are at an angle to each other, right angle. So there are my squiggles right here and right here. And now what I'm going to do is cut out my shapes and basically slide them across. They're going to move straight across to the other side. This is what makes the puzzle pieces fit together. If you have really tiny hands, you might need mom and dad's help for this part. Next, I'm going to take those pieces that I just cut out, make sure they're lined up the way that they were cut out of the page, and I'm going to use scotch tape to tape them to the opposite side. So I'm going to take this little piece, put some tape on it, and then slide it across so it's directly across from where I cut it out. and then stick it down. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. Little piece of tape, slide it across, stick it down. Now we have the shape that we are going to make our tessellation with. That's going to be our sort of puzzle piece. Look at your shape and try to imagine what it might be. Maybe it's like a unicorn cat, and this is its horn, or maybe it's a stingray. Look at it as if it's a cloud, and you're trying to find shapes in the cloud if you've ever played that game before. Once you've decided which way your shape is going to go, you're going to put it in the center of your page and trace. Now, you don't necessarily have to have a pencil for this part. It just helps in case you make a mistake. That way you can erase. But if all you have is a pen, that'll work just fine, too. Make sure you get all of the edges, including the bottom. And then we're going to take that puzzle piece, and we're going to slide it off to the side and fit it together with the other side of the piece we just traced and trace it again. You're going to repeat this over and over until your entire page is filled with your shape. Now they should fit together pretty neatly, but sometimes you have to fudge it a little bit because the corner isn't quite right or a piece of scotch tape got in the way. That's okay. It doesn't have to be totally perfect. Just do the best that you can. Now that I have my page full of my little tessellation puzzle piece shape, I'm going to look at it and try and figure out what it looks like. I think this looks kind of like a parrot, so I'm going to go back into all of my shapes and give them little parrot beaks and some eyes, some little details before I start coloring to let the viewer know what it is this is a picture of. Once you have all of your details added, now's the time to start adding color. If you don't have access to coloring materials, you can just use your pencil to shade it in to give it some more detail, 
or if you have colored pencils or markers at home, you can use those to add color. You can also layer your colored pencils kind of like we did for the 3D letters. If you want to give it some shadow, maybe some texture, just extra details to really emphasize what it is you've turned your little tessellation shape into. I'm going to add some shadows using a darker green around all of the areas where those would naturally fall, like around the beak, under its neck, around the eyes. And then I'm going to go back in and add some feathery texture by just doing some little overlapping U shapes. You can color all of your tessellation shapes the same if you want, or you can color them different colors. I like a lot of colors, so I'm gonna use some different colors to give all of my little parrots bright, vibrant rainbow plumage. And there you have it. There is your beautiful colored tessellation. You can create basically anything with this. It is totally up to your imagination. If you want, you can use a Sharpie to outline your shapes. You don't have to, but some people like that. So if you want to see what that looks like, it looks something like this. I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you would like to share your creations, please send them to my email address that I will put on the screen in just a second. And I hope you're all doing great and staying safe and healthy. I love you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.